I think maybe Elon or maybe uh, some of his key leaders challenge and say, okay, we have this box go on, like you said. Okay, we build it in the body shop with robots. Then we put it on the paint shop. Then we put it in the assembly line. And in the assembly line, there's a term that they are, is being used often by Tesla, which is called operator density. So essentially, to assemble anything around the vehicle, you have to go around the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if you could split the vehicle, you can see it clearly, you can split the vehicle into a front module, a rear module, a battery module, and put the two sides together, and assemble these each individual components separately. Uh, then it's more efficient because around this box, uh, when you send the box through the paint shop, for example, 80% of that box is, paint, is air, yeah. 85%, whatever, the volumetrically. Mm -hmm. That's waste. So this is all the things that we have been similarly working on. So I have a very fascinating interview for you guys today. The man speaking's name is Mark, and he works for a company called Caresoft. And what Caresoft does is similar to Monroe Live, but their business model is a little bit different. They have been tearing down Tesla vehicles and BYD vehicles since 2017, and they take the data that they accrue from all of their research, and what they are doing is approaching OEMs and trying to teach them how to switch to the methods that Tesla is doing so that they can stay competitive. And in this podcast today, of which I've pulled out the highlights for you guys, Mark is going to share the data that him and his team of experts have gathered showing that Tesla has managed to drop the cost of producing a vehicle by 30% by switching to this unboxed process that they forecast will be used to make the $25,000 vehicle. Here we go. We can see the evolution from say the S to the X, to the three, to the Y, and we can see the changes. Uh, so for example, we see a huge steps change after the Model 3. Tesla talks about, or Elon Musk talks about production hell. And I think there was a, in the Tesla Y, you can see a great, great improvement in 2020, where they went to modular build and giga castings to simplify parts and uh, so on and so forth. Then you go to 2021, the two-piece giga casting becomes a single-piece giga casting. And this is in the rear. In the rear. Mm -hmm. And then in 2022, uh, or a lot of part, you see the front giga casting, the rear giga casting, and no floor. So when you look at that path and then you see what they announced in the it's very clear they're going more, it, it appears to us, at least uh, to us, that uh, we may be right, we may be wrong, but uh, we... Um, that they're going to unbox the vehicle. So uh, we have now uh, full data. We have built an entire car, which is what we think the new Tesla of the future is going to be, which is totally unboxed. Uh, we built the whole digital twin for it. Uh, last week, it met all US crash requirements. So we have a very, very good idea what the new Tesla is going to be like. It's actually a really big deal that it passed the crash test requirements for this company's simulations because there's a lot of concerns among automotive experts when you move to a brand new technology like this unboxed process that Tesla is about to embark on. Is the crash test safety going to be the standard when you're taking all these different pieces and fitting them together at the very end? How do you get them to be structurally adhesive together? And I think the giga casting really helps with that because Mark goes on a little bit about torsional rigidity and how you get that from the giga castings, but he doesn't actually give us a lot of information on why it is so safe on, on the crash test scores because he's trying to preserve that data so that he can actually sell it to the OEMs. He doesn't want to give it all away on this podcast, but that is basically the gist of it. There's an opportunity now because you're building modules you can introduce robots in. Okay. Uh, Thirty. You can. You can. Uh, or even other simple automation. Yes. Not simple, just robot. Yes. Simple automation in, and so on. So, and uh, the most important thing: one, it takes out, it, it reduces the number of hours it takes to assemble a car, and uh, also it reduces significantly reduces the uh, plant investment. Uh, just we did also a calculation based on this data and. Everything uh, working backwards uh, because we have laid out all three assembly lines. That is the, the legacy OEMs assembly line, the Tesla Y assembly line, and the future Tesla assembly line. And we, uh, from a financial perspective, and with Tesla's announcements that they want to build 20 million vehicles by uh, 
2030, uh, the savings in invest in just in manufacturing plant investment uh, uh, is around $11 billion. And that's based on the amount of equipment that they have purchased in Austin, which they have filed with the county in Austin for their manufacturing, for their, for their building permits. Mm -hmm. So if you work backwards, it's around, uh, if you need um, 18, bill, 18 million more units and assuming half a million units per plant, you know, 36 plants, 36 plants, that's $36 billion. We estimate at least a 30% reduction in investment which means Tesla will save at least $11 billion. Yeah, this is a really fascinating case study. I mean, 2023 volume, you can see was 2 million. And just seven years later, Tesla's internal goal of 20 million, a 10x in deliveries in just seven years. So at volume per factory, they have 500,000 vehicles. Of course, Shanghai is doing a million per year. So the number of factories required for 2030 volume at 36 might actually be a little bit less. And if we go down to the manpower, I find it interesting how the manpower estimate in the traditional way Tesla builds cars at 180,000, when you go to the unboxed, that manpower comes down to 126,000. And what I estimate or assume about this model is that they are not uh, taking into account Optimus in driving that uh, manpower down because as you move to that unbox process, like you said, you don't have to go around the vehicle on the assembly line anymore. You're going to enable Optimus to get in there as Optimus gets better and better at working like a human. So maybe the cost of savings 30% over time, you know, Tesla uh, accrues even more savings as they roll out Optimus into their manufacturing processes. Matthew, is, is this approach to constructing vehicles predicated on them being electric vehicles versus being ice vehicles? The fundamental premise here is that you can unbox the body, okay? So if you look at, uh, so just to, just to let you know, the companies that don't do a floor is the other one that's there is the BYD. They have also uh, taken or done a vehicle where the body has no floor, okay? But in order to unbox a vehicle, you need to be able to have enough uh, torsional stiffness and the battery and the, uh, so the two giga castings have tremendously enabled the ability to split the body out because uh, without those giga castings and the battery being a kind of a stiff member to give torsional stiffness, uh, in our simulations and the future simulations that we have done, the vehicle would struggle to meet uh, crash requirements because a body has two functions one it has to protect first and foremost safety it has to protect the occupants and the customers driving the vehicle and second it has to prevent you protect you from the elements so we have been working on this for uh, nearly two years uh, building the digital twins doing all these simulations doing all these things I would say <laughs> must be by the time we finish this this year it'll be close to 200,000 man hours uh, doing this work. It's essentially like uh, we had a whole team of experts uh, from the industry. Uh, Terry, who was on the show, who's the... Uh, Terry Wachowski, Terry, right, yeah, who yeah. works at Kerasov. Yeah. Terry was uh, formerly executive vice president at GM, ran all programs, and he has a whole team of experts. We have a whole engineering team. And I think we will by the end of the movie here, we will have spent close to 200,000 man hours to essentially... It's like uh, we have a whole team that's trying to build a new car and say, hey, this is what we think is happening and give a leg up to all the other automakers and say, hey, don't let's not just wait for under two years to get the benchmark. Let's kind of predict. So you start thinking this way. And uh, we're working with uh, the senior levels with uh, some OEMs uh, who are very, very advanced level discussions where they want to understand what it is. They want to uh, buy this data and they want us to help uh, work with them to craft the future solution. What a great service because the OEMs need all of the help that they can get. If we just look at this data that Carisoft has provided, if you go from the Model 3 in 2018 to the Model Y made in Austin of last year, or the year before, that's a 35% reduction in parts. If you go from the Model Y in 2020 to the next gen EV that Carisoft is forecasting, that's a 43% reduction in parts. And if you go from the 2018 Model 3 
all the way to the next gen EV. Tesla has deleted 63% of the parts. So I think the OEMs need to make this investment in what Carsoft is offering to try and at least survive and copy Tesla. If that's the last thing they do, it's their best chance at surviving. You know, again, the 30% cost reduction sort of overall. Um, if you could break that down, I mean, where does that cost come out? Does it come, come out because you, I think you, you mentioned you build a smaller paint shop. Does it come out because you need fewer welding robots? Does it come out because you need fewer people, operators at, at different stages of the assembly, the final assembly process? And talk about sort of where, where the chunks of cost saving occur. Okay, so there's two, two areas of cost. Okay, let's, uh, I'll just, this is what we can give you right now. One is, is a 30% reduction in plant investment. Okay, so that's capital investment. Capital investment. And then there's 30% reduction in process time. Okay. Okay. So that's work hours, people hours. Work, uh, work hours just by going from a legacy, from a legacy OEM's traditional build to a modular build, mm -hmm. and then also the automation involved. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's look at it this way. If you have giga castings, you need to buy the presses, the giga casting that's expensive, but you're taking out a lot of robots out, okay, in the body shop. So individual individual welding robots get replaced by a giga casting. Well, set. multiple parts come in, plus you're doing, uh, I cannot share a lot of this because uh, it's part of the results of our simulation. We share this with our customers who, uh, who are buying this from us. But... Uh, you're significantly reducing the number of wells that okay. on the well, vehicle. Yes, yeah, you're significantly reducing the number of parts. And by unboxed, you're reducing in the green field the paint shop footprint. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I didn't really consider that bonus. And it's funny because Tesla released this photo today saying, if you look into the paint booth from the entry end, you can see the curvature of the earth. It is that long. Our fully automated paint lines enable colors that are unprecedented in the industry. So you can see how massive their paint shop is right now. And if you move to an unboxed process, you can actually make it smaller because you don't need to have room to fit an entire car through it. You can actually paint the parts before you put together all, the, all of the modules at the end of the process. Like, uh, it's like Tesla is kind of a villain. No, absolutely not. Tesla is an American company. And I'm an American, I've become an American citizen. I'm an immigrant to this country. You've got to be proud it's an American company. It's leading the automotive industry. So we should be very proud instead of vilifying that company. Uh, totally agree. Yeah, okay. So uh, now just imagine if Tesla was in some other part of the world. It would be called BYD and it would be viewed <laughs> as a threat. I think, yeah. that's, I think we yeah. know the answer to that question. Yeah, yeah. but the point is it's Tesla is an American company. So, you know, they're at the forefront of innovation. And I'll just tell you one other thing. Uh, even this morning, I, I use WeChat with my Chinese customers. The top benchmarked company, even for the Chinese, is still Tesla. Okay, still we, Tesla. It's yeah. still Tesla. Um, before COVID, they would ask us about other companies, other OEMs. Today, the Chinese don't even bother. They are interested in Tesla or themselves. Right, not Volkswagen, not GM. They don't. They, they feel they are far ahead of the others, and so on. And they say, "Hey, we we are much better than them." So we want to know. We you only learn from people who are better than you. Well, who is Tesla going to learn from then, right? I mean, the answer is nobody, and the answer has always been nobody for the last twenty years. Tesla has been at the front. They've been the ones doing the hard work that everybody else is learning from. And Tesla knows you can't get to 20 million vehicles delivered annually by selling 50, $40,000 vehicles. It has to get lower. You gotta drop the prices. So I cannot wait to see this unboxed process with my own eyes. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, but it's time for an extremely important message. Now, which one of you are gonna subscribe to Jacob Hilton? Did I stutter? He doesn't post every day like the others. What? He, he posts like almost every day. I think he's too young to comment on investing, sir. No, no, no. People are saying his youth is refreshing. You know what? You guys, you guys can go. You know, get out of here. Optimus, go and fetch me my coffee. Yes, master. Hmm?